since everything in the universe is intimately related to everything else in the universe, and it's all essentially one, at some fundamental level, everything being in relationship means that everything is impacting everything else, and at some level, everything is an omen, all the time. Because if you can understand the relationships, and if you, if you could read the language of the world, you would be able to understand the omens. And so maybe sometimes you see the omens and, you, and it like clicks in your mind and, and meaning is through interpretation and it, and it zings to you and it's poetry or it's God speaking or yo talking to you or however you want to make sense of it. And other times you don't quite figure it out and it just seems like, ah, it's just the workings of life and things are going by and it's all coincidence. Yeah, we, we are pattern seeing creatures. Our brains evolve to find patterns in the universe. Patterns that hey, wait a minute, I saw that before. That means it's going to rain. That means this guy's going to try to hit me in the head with that rock. That means I better, I better get out of here before I get burned. These patterns cause and effect in patterns. And we find lots of patterns, and some of them we can rely on, bank on it, build our lives on, and others we're getting into danger if we build them. It doesn't mean we didn't see a pattern. The mm -hmm. pattern is there. It just may not mean something. It may not be a predictive pattern that can tell us something. But it's still a pattern. And if you don't know whether it's coincidence or magic and you want to play with it, play with it. If you want to believe it's a magic and it, it makes you feel good, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if we, those of us, there are those of us who are still trying to be scientists who want to say, let's test it. Let's find out if that actually can lead to a prediction in the future. If it can, I'm a believer. If it can't, then it was just fun to play with. Mm -hmm. But science comes from your head, and some other things come from your heart. And you propose this, you know, conceivable, it's certainly conceivable that it might be statistically possible to analyze all the phenomena in the universe and determine whether synchronicity is subjective or objective. But it's also entirely possible, as you know, that that's, you know, while conceivable, an impossible experiment ever to carry out. And so it will never be possible to definitively say, you know, Yo is talking mm -hmm. back to people, or Yo is not, which, as you say, then that's not a decision you make with your head. It's a decision you make with your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's right. You feel Yo talking to you in your heart, your head doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Just like if you fall in love with someone, your head might come up with a million reasons why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, but if it's real love, you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, I start, I've struggled with that in yelling because it, especially, and I think that what I came to understand, what I believe, is that when on a personal basis it doesn't matter. If you want to believe it and it makes you feel good, that's great. You might be right, you might be wrong. I might be wrong, you might be right, I don't know. But when it comes to taking group action, when it comes to deciding whether or not someone could have an abortion because God's going to be angry or whether it's okay for gay people to get married, when it comes to stuff like that, I, want to, I think that it's important that we be able to see some evidence that we can all look at and point to that's convincing. For an individual, Individual beliefs, we all have personal beliefs that other people don't share. I have them, you have them, we all have them. So what? But if it's good for a group is going to say, okay everybody, let's go, we're going to take action. Everybody, right foot, left foot, let's go, we're going to take action on this and we're going to say, this is the way it's got to be for our society. For that, I think we need some evidence. Not for a personal belief. Let's see there. That's, that's what I think the distinction needs to be. Very cool. Yeah. Makes me think of um, hmm? care, care for the I soul is care for the Thanks. your Could it really be true that we could convert mass into energy? Right. Or do this form? Exactly. And then they did it. That's and then the consequences that were so horrendous that, yeah. Well, which brings in the question of humanity <laughs> and science. When you talk about all this need for material fact and experimentation and how this long line of experimentation and things have been developed, and there are so many stories of scientists' work that have been taken by some energy that turned them into an atrocity toward against humanity. Mm -hmm. So at what point do, in the conversation of God and all of this and science, the responsibility of science and humanity come into the picture with uh, all creating, all connected, all one God? 
Yeah, I, I think that science and this way of knowing is a path to knowing what's true about the universe, about reality, you know, certainly about things that we can act on as a group, but it tells us absolutely nothing about why we should or shouldn't do this or that. That's our feelings. And I don't think we, I think we can know what they are very clearly. Just go look at the 100 most popular movies. What the ones that people thrill to, cry to, think are great movies. And they all have these same principles about fairness and justice and doing the right thing under adversity. You know what you should do. You know right. love and, and care about the world. But that's not something you need to use science to know. That's something that's in us. It's our feelings. Mm -hmm. And science doesn't tell us what we should do, it tell, or what we want to do, or what's the right thing to do to make us happy and fulfilled. It tells us how to do things, So, what's the most practical way to get from point A to point B? Or what are the consequences going to be if you take action C, what will, you can predict what will actually occur in the world. That's what science does, it tells you about the facts, but not about why we should or shouldn't do anything. That's got to come from the heart. The thing you said about, you know, group decisions, you said, basically you said, as I understand it, you know, if we want to feel like God is speaking back to us and we're through synchronicity or through the voices that we hear in our heads or our hearts, that's fine as long as we're making individual decisions. But if we're making group decisions, then those should be based on some more empirical basis. And the examples you gave were like laws against abortion, you know, laws against gay rights, which are often justified by people's, you know, small-minded and hateful religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. But there are other cases where I think it's totally acceptable to make group decisions based on spiritual insight. For example, if Orion and Joby and I and a hundred of our friends are in the woods doing some big ritual and we want to decide whether to dance clockwise or counterclockwise. It's perfectly acceptable for us to designate Orion to go into trance and come back with a vision that will tell us, you know, what is the purpose of the ritual that we're going to do tonight. So you're, you're, what you're doing is you're modifying it. I say, for group decisions, we should use science. And you're saying, well, wait a minute, let's see what's the principle. I'm trying to get a principle out of what you're saying. Group decisions about whether we're going to impose our will on other people. If we're doing it because we're just having fun and it's not affecting other people, not hurting them, it's not, they're not screaming in pain, Hey, it doesn't matter. But when it's a group decision that we're going to try to impose, that we need to say, we've got to stop global warming. We really, there's some evidence here. We really got to, you have to stop doing that. We all, and we're going to use our group will to try to impose and say, we all need to do this. That's different than going on from the woods and dancing. I feel moved to thank yeah. you for sharing yeah. Yeah. from such a so it's so thought provoking, but it was so heart connected and, and experiential, and that that moved me. And I have to admit, I couldn't stay with you every. I wasn't there with you every moment, but the moments I was there, I was fully there. And I really appreciated the way that you presented your yourself in that way. And I also feel moved to thank Jason and Jen for organizing and making this space. Yeah. Yeah. And for all of a couple of points. First, when we clean, if you could be aware, we we'll talk about awareness of these plastic cups and the plastic spoons. I actually wash them and use them again. I just so, not the kind of the flowers. And so you can just put them in the and, so, and <laughs> these beautiful flowers are available. <laughs> 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 Have this every month, but maybe we'll start to do it more. Yeah. I, I felt today like it was so great. I wanted to do more than just one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dan.